is the version control system. It's the software that you install for the most part, right? And so you can install it on a Mac, on a Linux, just Google install git and it'll bring you here. Um, Does it support specific file It supports format? any file formats. So you can track anything. And so then there's a big difference between, so pretty much you have a folder which has files in it, and you initialize a Git repository, right? So a repository is like, hey, this stores those changes over time. So remember, you have a file, and then you, you change the differences between that file. So okay, can I have a repository for different projects? Like yep, exactly. So you usually, that's the way you'd usually structure it. Um, that being said, you usually don't nest them. So if you have a folder with a GitHub repository, you usually don't have a, a subfolder in there that has a GitHub repository as well. It's possible, but it's not very recommended. So you would separate them into different folders, but they would they would be kind of siblings rather than a parent-child type folder relationship. So Git, when you have a when you have a file, so let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna open this this I'm gonna make this bigger. Sorry, this bigger. All right, so I'm in this repository or just just this folder. And I have a bunch of different things. These are different modules and stuff. Sorry, again, it's kind of hard to see that. But let's say I want to commit a certain thing to that. So, okay. Once you have a folder, if you say git init, right, it initializes a git repository. So it says, hey, this is a git repository. It says start tracking some stuff. You haven't told it what you're tracking yet, but it just says start tracking some stuff. And... You can always, so one of the very useful commands is git status. This is going to be probably pretty big. Um, if you've made changes, so let's say I'm going to change this file around. Um, I'm going to open up this R script and I'm going to add a couple of blank lines to it. Okay, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to say git status. So if you say git status, I'll make this big, um, it'll tell you usually with colors what's happened. So it says modify. So it says this file was modified, and so you just made a change, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been quote unquote saved, let's say. And so similarly, I'm gonna edit another file, kind of coming back to the discussion we just had about adding and um, committing. I just added a black line here. So now if I say git status, it's gonna say both of these are modified, right? So now if I wanna say, hey, I want to um, add that file, or sorry, I want to say these changes I want to keep track of. You'd say git add statistics lecture statistics.rmd. And if I say git status now, you'll see something different. So changes to be committed, changes not staged to be change, staged for commit. So add kind of has a double connotation. When you haven't, when you've just started a new repository, right? And nothing's been added to it. Git add says track this file. Okay. But when it's you've already had a repository, you've already state you've already committed changes to that file, and we'll talk about commit in a second. Then add stages them. Right. So I called. think this is like this is one of these things. I remember yeah. when you know when I was in grad school and I was mm -hmm. using SVN, and then my office mate started using Git. And we talked about a little bit like what's the difference between these things. Some of it has to do with like the way like the version doesn't really do the version control like on your local system. I mean I guess maybe it can, but it's like it can, I yeah. used it I used it to like keep I yes. I, I was connecting yep. remotely to like our cluster yes. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this idea of like the local version control versus the remote yeah. version control. Yes. And so I think that one of the things that's different here is like when you um yeah there's like it's strange like this that when you commit it's local. Whereas yes. I think somehow yep. with with subversion, like it didn't have those like two layers or something like yes, that. Yes, no, you're, like, you're 100% right. There's something like that. So I think that's yeah. part of why. And so, so then maybe this makes sense to like, I don't know. It's just like another, another little. Like, well, layer. the reason that Git was designed this way is because like people looked at subversion and they were like, it's, and they thought it was too centralized because right. everyone, everything, every action you take is. Affected like this main thing yeah. exactly. in this way. So that, like, Git, people Theoretically, so so then everything looks like it's like a real spoke kind of relationship. Yeah. Where with Git, you can just have theoretically, you just have like networks. Yeah. Where people are like pushing and pulling commits from each other, like just you and me going back and forth. Right. And so, but that 
the assumption was that everyone would have their own like Git server. So like I would have my Git server always yeah. up, you would have your Git server always okay. up, and if I made changes to a file that you were working on, we push and pull forever. Yeah. But what happened is that the people don't stand up their own Git server. Yeah. And they right. just give up. Yeah. So then it's basically mm -hmm. like the centralized thing. Except but we have kind of like there's a little bit more subtlety about like local. how you add stuff. You have this like local yeah. it sort of has local version control. It does. Right? If you haven't pushed, yeah. but each commit you make is making version control local. Yes. Right? So things here, right? So here it, yeah, so everything I've done so far is local. Right. And I don't even have to ever go to the internet, go to a repository. Right. And, even, but, and even if you commit, is that local? Still local. Right. Yes. So that's, I think, that's the thing that's a little bit interesting to me, too. Mm -hmm. like, so you can commit yep. multiple times locally. So it's yes. like saving yep. local snapshots. But then when you actually push, then you're putting whatever your most recent committed version is. So, so that's a good point. So, okay. So once you've added, right? So once you've added. Sorry. So now we're like yeah. talking to No, no, no. But once, but once you've added, right? So that's that's the, the next step. You commit. So, whatever is in green here essentially says stages to be committed, right? You could have added. You, we've changed two separate files, but we only want to save the one to like a snapshot, and and we'll call this a commit. And because and. So what commit exactly is that? Commit. So it says okay, this is a point where you could go back and like. It's a milestone. It's a marker that says like if you, everything it's burned like, down you, later. You like save the yeah. version of the file that's dated today's date. Yeah. Like, yeah. So you could go back mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So like you know how the cluster used to be like backed up on tapes, right, and yeah, sent it's somewhere like something. A, it's like a tape. From that day. Right, and so like you say, git commit, and it will pull this up. This is not the way I would say to do it. You can say git commit, but you, every single commit has to have a message with it. So just. Yeah. Yeah. Adding. Yeah. Exactly. So it automatically opens up VI. Adding blank lines to RMD. Right. Then if you RMVI, you hit escape colon Q. Or sorry, WQ for right Q. I I thought it was a commit. So you never do that. You never really do it that way. You never really do it that way. You usually always do git commit dash m for the message. You never would do that. Yeah, so you, you do the message. All right, so now I'm going to I'm gonna go in and add. How do you change the default type editor to not be vi? Uh, git config, I'm sure. Yeah. So, so if you say git config, there's usually configurations things that will allow you to um, set up shortcuts, set up your username, your email, um, because this will be really important for GitHub, uh -huh. right? So let now statistics lecture statistics dot r git commit adding um, blank lines to r file. Okay, so now these are two separate commits. So if I in a week or two, in this repository, had she made a bunch of changes and everything had to burn to the ground and all that stuff had to be deleted, like everything broke after after today, I can go back to this specific point in time and have the exact copy of what was going on there. So um, that's usually you don't have you sh you don't always have to do that. If that happens sometimes. Um, a lot with collaboration, it doesn't happen as as frequently if it's just you doing stuff, unless you really screw something up or something gets corrupted or something like that. Um, so what does it get list? What are the, how do you list all the commits? Get, um, three. Huh? If you just type get, it lists a lot of commands. No, 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 no. I want to see the tree. Oh, yeah. I want to see the last. Oh, get log? Get log. That's oh, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, get log. So this will just show you the log of when you committed it, what was committed, kind of, and... What was the message? Mm -hmm. Right? So this was the one I initially committed. This is the second one I committed. Right? So if I said, oh, like, you remember when I changed that R file? I didn't want to actually save those blank lines. I can revert back to, to this, to this mm -hmm. point right here, and those blank lines in that R file won't be there anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of versioning. And that's why, you know, messages are kind of important to know what happened. Because if I don't have good messages here, Right. It's not always so simple to see what's going on. Right, right. 
So that is Git. Everything is on my machine. Okay. Then there's GitHub. Right. So this is my GitHub. Right. So you log in with your email or Gmail or something like that. And then if you want to push this to the, if you want to push it to a server, if you want to take this this repository you have on your machine and sync it up to somewhere on the internet so that later, like a, a few things can happen. One, you can collaborate with other people. Two, you can distribute your code in a systematic way. Or three, you can have a backup for your projects. Right? So GitHub, the hub part is the server part which allows you to do that. Right? So adding and committing are all are, are done at a local level. And what we're going to be talking about in a second is pushing is done at what's called a remote level. So GitHub is this remote server, right? So I think I have, if I go to my profile, I think I just made something imaging. Intro to R. So if you, if you here, let's set up a new, let's set up a new uh, repo. So you just click, click the plus sign, create new, new repository. And you could put a repository name, the description. You don't have to click any of these things and click create repository. And you will go, and it'll say, it'll show you something like this. So if you have nothing, if you have a totally blank folder, this is not a bad thing to do. All it does, if you do this, run this on the command line, it'll make a readme file, right? It'll add it. It'll, sorry, if you're just opening a folder, oops, sorry. It'll say, like, just make a readme file, initialize a GitHub, Git repository, add this locally, commit this locally, say it's the first commit. And then this line here, remote add origin, that URL. So that's saying, this is where my repository is going to live on GitHub, mm -hmm. right? So this is the remote, right? And, and we want to, and this is, origin is just a label. So, but do you have a local copy which gets synced? Yep, so I have a local copy right now, right? So get, so right, right now, this is my, this is my local copy of everything. So now if I say git remote add origin, sorry, this one already had one. So git add origin, and I say git remote v, it says, hey, origin, the label origin, this is where it points to. So this is the GitHub page, right? And then, so now everything's local. But once I say push, it's pretty much saying sync it to the internet. Sync it to that repo. And this is what will happen. It compresses objects. It pretty much it's upload, right? More or less. So uh, similarly, there's a pull, right? So if if someone, so if Vadim, if you made a package or Margaret made a package, right? And you, you know, um, I said, oh, I like this one. I want to make some changes to it. And I made some changes and I pushed them up to the server. If you said, oh, I want those changes on my machine. I want to to these files. You just say you'd say git pull. Mm -hmm. So pulling um, is good when you are doing mostly collaboration. But that being said, a lot of people I, I know, for example, might have their uh, cluster account, right? They might have a, they might have a, a folder on their local machine, a folder on the cluster, and they they add and commit locally. They push to GitHub, and then in the cluster they pull it. So you're collaborating with yourself, but like it's two different machines. So I'm saying as long as two different machines or two different copies of it are working and going through um, GitHub, that's usually uh, what would happen. So um, that's kind of adding, committing, pushing. That, for the most part, is what you'll be doing a lot of the time. Um, and then the other things that we can talk about really briefly are branching, forking, and cloning. Yeah, I those words. Yeah. So, so now, now if I refresh this page, it doesn't show this anymore. It shows all my files. Right? So these are all the files that I had on, on in that folder and now they're up on GitHub and you can click on them and because we have a, if you have a readme.md, yeah. a markdown file, it'll automatically render that on the page. Yeah, so I was wondering about that because quite often you see those already mm -hmm. like compiled and you can just see the HTML. Yes. So, um, this service provided by so it's it, it marked out if you have a markdown file, it automatically converts that to HTML and renders it. And this readme.md it displays at the bottom, yep, exactly. I have to say, I find GitHub set up to be like completely unintuitive and like, 
So it will. I, it. I just look at this page and I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to click on? Like, they're like, yes. there's like a million yeah. little things and I like, I can't. Yes. And I don't know, I find it. And like, and then I, I click agree. on a folder. Yep. And then I can't figure out how to go back. Even though I know it has, it has the thing. The double up. Know, there's something about yeah. this search sort of like this no. path. Like, well, it's a ton of buttons. There's tons of buttons. Like, yeah. So, so the main ones, I would say, so one thing that's nice, if it's something that's written in Markdown or R Markdown, it'll try to render it. Yeah, which is interesting. R Markdown doesn't come only, it, because it has a YAML header, uh, like, yeah, okay. you know, the stuff that you specify like this, it will, but it will render. It won't execute your code. It will not, yes. Like, for example, like if I'm plot, mm -hmm. display the plot. Exactly. Like that, but. Exactly. Um, and oddly... Oh, right. Oddly, the HTML, like, the HTML yeah, isn't like, rendered. Like, yeah. Like, yes. Exactly. So, um, but let's say uh, somebody. So there, there are two different types of things. So I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to Sean. So let's say. What have you been working on? The Unix Workbench. I have like 200. <laughs> I have like 230, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like, oh man, I love this stuff, right? So you can do one of two things. One is cloning, and one is forking. Mm -hmm. Forking keeps some record of where the original repository was. So I'm going to click this and say fork. So I'm going to click my so my username, right? Usually, if you if you don't have like groups or anything, it'll just come up. And it'll say like, hey. So now it says my name slash the Unix workbench forked from Sean's Unix work workbench. So nothing is on my machine yet, right? Now I want to now I want a folder on my machine that I can make edits. I can push up here. I want that repository locally so I can actually make some edits. So the only important the only important buttons so far are fork, clone, or download. And you don't, but you don't have to fork it, right? You do not have to fork it. So, so I guess that's your, sorry, you're gonna, yep. you're gonna say. No, 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 yeah, that's a good point. So I, mean, you, I always just do clone or download, copy the URL, yep. and clone it, and then Yes. So let let I will demonstrate that. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my desktop. And so uh, that was a bad name. I'm gonna make one Came from my own last name. Okay. Git clone. And this is, no, this is my username. This is the one I forked, and I'm cloning. Okay. And then, no. So, okay. Now I'm going to go back to Sean's original repository, right? This is Sean's original one. I'm going to clone this one. It's going to copy it. Okay. So now, Sean and mine both have the Unix workbench. Both have the exact, all the same exact files in there. Note, if you do try to clone something into a folder, that has a folder name that's the exact same thing. This is why I made two separate folders. It's going to say there's a folder already existing in there with the specific, specified name. You either have to specify a new name or you have to put it somewhere else. So um, so now they're all exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Sean's. Right, so not, not that one. So I'm going to open Sean's. I'm going to make an edit. Right. I'm going to save it. Okay. Stop rendering. So now Sean's has been edited. So I'm in Sean's. I'm in the Unix workbench. Git add. Uh, you can say, if you want to do a shotgun, you can say git add all. I'm going to clear this so we can start up at the top. Git status. So git commit edited one file. Now. Note, this is the origin, the, the GitHub repository that it's set to is Sean's. 
because that's where I cloned it from. Right. I can try to – so if I say push, yeah. I can't <laughs> unless Sean made me a collaborator. Right. So if, if Sean has a repository, like – and you guys are real – pretty much if you're like, I trust that person a lot, yeah. Yeah. right, then it's fine. I trust that person to pull things first, then work, and then push them, fine. If you don't trust them, right? Well, most so, of the time you don't know them. Or you don't know yeah, them. That's, which is the really nice thing about yeah. code is you can see someone else's code mm -hmm. and say, like, hey, like, I have a way to improve that. Let me do some free work yeah. for you. Like, you have a typo. I changed that. So the so cloning and downloading is fine. Just the pointer to the to where it is is whatever repository you cloned it from. And if you don't have access to that, you can't push those edits to a repository. Uh, okay, so then forking is if you want to be able to like remotely store and change. Yes. Like, so if I go to mine, and I say, okay, I'm going to change this, and I make some add some lines. Get add, get, uh, what is it? Uh, oops, sorry, CD, the Linux workbench. Get add 06, right? Sorry, CI, CI is just a, uh, as a shortcut I made. So commit, add a blank, get push. That works because if we go to my repo, Right. Also, just as a thing, if you're on their website and you click fork, it says, "Oh, you already have a fork. You can't fork it again." So you just can go to yours. All right, so, maybe I'll start, like, a bit so now, yeah. So now Sean's got his. Let's say I let's say I fix the typo rather than put some blank lines, mm -hmm. right? And I want to say, "Hey, Sean, we don't. You don't know me. You don't. I'm. I don't. I don't even want to be a collaborator on your project. But don't give me X. But here's a fix you might want. That's called a pull request." So on your fork, you click pull request and say new pull request. And so what this will do is it will give you a diff, the difference between yours oh, and, and Sean's. And I can say, and you can just kill this, but I'm going to go. Yeah, sure, right? So I'm going to say create pull request. So I'm going to say, this is so great. Like I made all these edits. You should want them. They are awesome. And sorry, when it's doing the diff, is it doing it based on the version that you forked from, or is it doing it based on the current So version? right here, it says base fork. So this is Sean Cross, right? Um, he oh, only has one branch. Okay. Comparing mine, the head fork, so the one in front, and looking at the master branch. Okay. So then it says, OK, create pull request. So now on Sean's, it says there is one pull request out there. So this is really, really nice for R packages. So let's say you're developing an R package. Somebody forked yours, fixed a bug, and then sends it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Also, we'll talk about tra we can talk about Travis and some other things that will check your packages automatically. Travis. So Travis is a way to say like, hey, this is an R package. Make sure it passes you know the standard R checks. If I send a pull request and you had Travis set up correctly, it'll check this fork to make sure that that is passed as well. So you're not like grabbing someone's code and say, oh, it should work, and then it breaks. And then it breaks because so it, it ensures that the thing, excuse me, it's called Travis. So that is a totally different system that plays very nicely with GitHub, but it's it's different. So, so okay, so we got forks, you know, pull requests and, and, and cloned. Clone is essentially just download. Um, more or less, but you download not only the files, you download the entire history, the Git history. So let's say Sean did something like I didn't. I don't like all the changes you made in the last week. I really liked your your book like five days ago, and you had to commit that. I could roll it back, get to that that point in time, and then compile Sean's book and like never want any of his new changes, right? Really, the only difference between clone and download is that clone keeps track of the remote. Yeah, okay. exactly. Right, it actually yeah. speaks to it, right? Yeah. Or download is just like a copy of it. Okay. Um, can I ask another question about, um, yeah. so one of the things that we're having that's behaving kind of strangely is SSH versus HTTPS. 
yeah. do you guys know much about that at all? Like, so for example, I use HTTPS for everything. So that's what Jacob uses. We tried. So I set it up. I, I've had SSH key set up on my computer like forever, and I had SSH key set up on Git uh, like from a long time ago, and so that's how I have it set up. And and so when I'm so this is talking about doing stuff from inside our studio too, because uh -huh. that's how we're going to teach the students that we're going to be working with that they're just going to work within our studios like GUI for doing the Git stuff. Sure. We're not really going to do much command line as much as we can help them avoid it. And so when I um, let's see, when I clone a repository, I put in the SSH URL type or whatever the SSH like when you do clone, sure. you say if I do HTTPS, it doesn't work. Like I get an error saying that it like it won't like yep. my SSH key doesn't work I guess because it's an SSH key that I, so the thing I guess the, the thing that I'm confused about is it doesn't work when I do the HTTPS path to it but for Leah for example who I know also just set it up with an SSH key it only yeah. works if she does do the HTTPS so and why would one of them work in the so you can click so and one of the so first of you yeah like, so you can flip back and forth yeah. for one. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's fine. Like, I know I just use the SSH URL, and she needs to use the HTTPS URL. So, you, it doesn't work with HTTPS for you. No. 